Hello world and welcome to the podcast for educators passionate about computing and digital making. I'm James Robinson, a Senior Learning Manager here at the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and this is the first of our three podcast episodes accompanying the recent issue of the Hello World magazine. Issue 26 explores digital literacy, asking what do we actually mean by that term and how can we best teach the skills that young people need to use digital technologies effectively, safely and responsibly in the classroom. We're trying something different this episode, a new format based on some of the feedback you've kindly shared with us. One thing you asked for were more practical, actionable tips from teachers around the world. So here is our first Teacher's Tips episode doing exactly that. We've chatted to three teachers, one who works with preschoolers in Minnesota, one in a rural community in Georgia, and one in an all-girls high school or secondary school in London. And we asked them to share what they have found helpful to develop their students' digital literacy skills. We hope that hearing their tips will inspire and help you engage your students with computing. Please let us know your thoughts by dropping us an email on podcast at helloworld.cc. Enough from me, now over to the teachers to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Katie Dahlman. I am a preschool teacher in Bloomington, Minnesota. This is my 16th year of teaching in early childhood. Over the past five years, I've had the opportunity to be a digital learning specialist in our early childhood program and really focus on computer science, unplugged activities with our four-year-olds. Hello, everyone. My name is Kurt Hitchens, and I am the computer science teacher at Saddle Ridge Elementary and Middle School in Rock Spring, Georgia. I'm Halima Bayat. I work in a southwest London Catholic girls' school. I've been working and teaching for uh, 20 years. I worked as a senior leader, and I'm currently working as head of department for digital T-levels and head of computing. Before we ask them for their tips on how to increase students' digital literacy, we challenge them to give us a line or two on what the term digital literacy means to them. Digital literacy? Ooh, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> I think goes back to just having those foundational skills in order to prepare them for being a digital citizen. And what I would say is Digital literacy is all about developing the knowledge and skills that are necessary to use technology to solve everyday problems and just complete essential tasks in the workplace. So digital literacy to me, it's all about understanding how the digital world works, how technology is used and how it impacts people. For example, it involves e-safety, it involves looking at ethical, moral, social issues. But most importantly, at the moment, for me, it's all about identifying correct sources and what might or might not be fat. So what do today's teachers suggest that you could do to increase the digital literacy of your students? Let's start with Halima in South London with her three tips. My first tip would be get them touch typing, get them to start becoming faster with their fingers on those keyboards because lots of things have become online. Exams um, in the future could be going online. So to me, it's really important to have those skills to touch type so you can be quite fast at generating information and being able to source it because then you'll be faster in your exams, get higher marks, and also you're very fast at getting your job done as well for future careers. Tip number two for me is use of generative AI. And I feel it's really important for that digital literacy to understand what the good and the bad is. So there are pros with AI, for example, if you're a special needs student or somebody who needs a bit more support, you could use AI to generate letters or help you with certain aspects, book writing, for example. But there is also the other side as well. I don't think a lot of people understand the fact of how much energy is produced in terms of the use of AI and how that impacts the environment. So I think it's really important to be teaching the pros and the cons at school level. My third tip would be lateral reading. I feel that it's really, really important to teach young people how to look for the correct sources and check their sources to make sure that what they are reading, what information they're taking in is genuine and is not made up. I wouldn't say that I have any of those in a particular order, but I would probably say lateral reading is the most important one, especially in the generation we are living in now and with what is going on in the world. So Halima's tips are to get your students touch typing to encourage the use and conversations around generative AI and to teach them lateral reading, equipping them with the tools to evaluate the credibility of a source. From southwest London to northwest Georgia now, here are Kurt's three tips for how to develop digital literacy in your classroom. 
So the first tip I would give to teachers is being very explicit about teaching concepts like problem solving and growth mindset. A lot of students that come into my class don't have like a specific set of steps they can use to go about approaching problems. So I try to be very, very explicit about teaching problem solving. We also um, try to focus on things like developing a, a growth mindset because regardless of what we're doing or exploring in terms of digital literacy, none of us are ever gonna get it right the very first time. So we're trying to get students to change that mindset from, oh, my failures are you know, a reflection of my lack of success. Well, no, really, that's just an opportunity for you to learn and grow and improve. So growth mindset, teaching problem solving process, and um, just, just teaching uh, perseverance in general, I think, is a, is a lesson that many students that I deal with on a daily basis just, just, just have to learn and, and get better at. The second tip that I would offer to teachers is make sure that you're providing consistent opportunities for creation and exploration within your classes, not just uh, for consumption. That's where a lot of students' experience with technology comes from is on the consumption side of things. Um, but I really try to emphasize exploration, hands-on, application, learning from mistakes, things along those lines. And I think it's helpful to have like some guardrails or some boundaries in terms of creation or exploration. But I think having that open-endedness does allow students opportunities to apply knowledge and skills that they've acquired in maybe some ways that you hadn't necessarily even considered before. And I think students in the long run benefit more from that and are able to retain knowledge and skills and apply those in new settings more um, than they would if they were just kind of sitting back and passively consuming uh, technology. The third tip is don't hesitate to go out and seek guidance from other uh, mentor teachers, instructional technology coaches, or other people you consider experts within your district or your region or your state. Um, for those of us that live in more rural areas, that's, that's just kind of a necessity. I know a lot of people that I work with pretty closely would agree that a lot of times people that live in this kind of setting feel like we're kind of on an island. And basically, if we want to explore and learn new things, it's kind of up to us to kind of pursue that and figure that out on our own. I think over the last several years, I have been able to do a much better job thanks to organizations like Georgia Tech and the Georgia Department of Education of being able to connect with other educators throughout the state to find those other experts and other mentors that I can call on when I do have questions or I'm trying to implement something new and, and I'm looking for ideas about how to best do that. So Kurt's suggestions are to develop problem solving skills and a growth mindset provide opportunities for open-ended creation and exploration, and to seek guidance from mentors and organizations. We asked him for an example of something he might do with his students to help those problem-solving skills and growth mindset. Here's what he said. Some seventh grade students right now that are working on developing skills and knowledge related to game design. And this morning, I had asked them to focus on designing a game that was going to meet the needs of an elderly person, a grandmother. One of the things that I really had to push them to start to think about is how do we show empathy for other people, the people that we're designing a product for? Uh, how do we get away from thinking about just what we want and what we need? And one of the things I had to think about is, well, your grandparents, what are some of the struggles that you see them having when it comes to technology? And how could you incorporate certain features into the game that you're designing that maybe would address the needs of that particular group of people. So I would say opportunities like that would be prime examples of trying to use growth mindset, trying to develop problem solving and teaching perseverance. More from Kurt in a bit and from Halima too, but now over to Katie in Minnesota for her three tips on how to develop digital literacy skills with preschoolers. My first tip to increase digital literacy would be to understand the why. Why is it important to teach computer science in your school or classroom? In my classroom, we embody the why through a lens of these three ideas, skills, equity, and joy. Computer science teaches so many transferable skills, whether that be cognitive skills, which fosters creative problem solving, creative thinking, helps kids approach challenges through innovative solutions across various disciplines. So you can use it in art, music, gym, science, and then it also enhances the social emotional learning through those um, developing those interpersonal skills through collaboration and clear communication and problem solving. 
And then thinking about equity, understanding that why. We recognize and want to take action, and we know that there are underrepresented individuals in the CS field, and so really using computer science as a tool to serve for that so that all students can have the opportunity to develop those skills and possibly have future careers in technology. And then the last but not least is joy, because that is something that computer science just ignites in all kids. Through lots of hands-on engaging activities, they can solve real-world problems and really have some personal expression. My second tip for enhancing digital literacy in your classroom is to integrate computational thinking skills vocabulary into your existing curriculum. Preschoolers naturally are engaged in tinkering. We're playing, we're exploring, we're problem solving. And so being really intentional to introduce and connect computational thinking vocabulary into your daily activities is so important. We can talk about algorithms in the form of hand washing or how to do watercolor painting. We can incorporate decomposition into our music study and break down how to make a rainstorm with our body. My third tip is redefining technology and starting with unplugged activities. So I'm a preschool teacher and technology doesn't have to be solely around screens or digital devices. We can really think about technology is using tools that have been designed for a specific use. And so with that in mind, tools in preschool like pencils can also be used for technology for our littlest learners. And they learn problem solving, creativity, and perseverance just through those things. When we have that strong foundation and use those technology tools at a young age, they can grow and transition to those more complex digital tools as they get older. So Katie's top three tips to increase digital literacy with, as she calls them, her littlest learners, is to understand your why, to integrate computational thinking skills and vocabulary into other learning and play, and to explore unplugged activities. We'd love to hear what you think of these suggestions. Which of these tips you've heard most appeal to you? What do you do that you think has really helped your students' digital literacy? And how would you define digital literacy in the first place? Let us know on email. We're podcast at helloworld.cc and helloworld.cc is where to go to read the new issue of the Hello World magazine. And you can read the digital version there for free. And if you'd like a physical copy and you're based in the UK, you can subscribe to have a print copy delivered directly to your door for free as well. We want these Teach Tips episodes to be shorter than our longer conversation-based podcasts, so I don't want to add much more. However, there were a couple of other great bits in the chats we have with teachers that we think you might want to hear. As you've heard, Halima teaches in a girls' school in South London, so we asked her if there was anything in particular she'd suggest regarding digital literacy skills for girls. You know, there's always been this idea that boys tend to use technology more than girls, but actually we have seen stats showing that those gaps have been closing. And um, so it's really important to teach young generation girls um, about checking facts and knowing what's around them, but allowing them to be careful with what they publish and what they do, because it may not support your future career or your education. And I feel for girls specifically, it is very important to be making note about these influences because they are very influenced quite quickly because sometimes it can mentally affect them quite drastically where they really start to believe that somebody looks like this or somebody's doing this. So mental well-being is really important and that's something to teach our younger generation, especially the girls. And that's why I aim to do not a, not just stand there as a teacher, I'm a counsellor, I feel as well. So I think it's really, really important to be talking about technology, but also encouraging those young girls to use that technology, especially those that come from diverse backgrounds and those that have special needs. There is a place for them. And I feel that technology creates that. And it's about educating those young people to know you have a place in this world through technology. Helima also works with a lot of underprivileged students, so we asked her if she had any particular tips that she could share for engaging them with computing and digital making. I feel there's a misconception sometimes with people that I need to have a new phone, I need to have an updated laptop, I need to have this. And working with underprivileged students, it's really important for them to know that they are not different or less compared to those who may have more technology. So, so when they're in school, they do have access to technology 
days when they're not in school, what can they do? There is something always out there. It's really important for me to know what is around my students' area. So I do constantly do research what the libraries are offering, what free um, events universities are offering. For example, summer clubs, events where access to robots, for example. And there are lots of colleges who are um, working with especially Key Stage 4 students during the summer term, doing a one or two week program. And they have university students come in who are supporting those younger students in knowing about technology. I just want to return to Kurt for an additional tip from him, specifically for teachers who work in rural schools like his in Rock Spring, Georgia. So for teachers like me that are working in rural districts, I think sometimes we get too wrapped up in maybe what we don't have in terms of technology. And I think we can teach a lot of the same concepts without necessarily having to have a specific type of device or number of devices. There are all sorts of really creative, unplugged activities that you can use to help students develop those essential concepts that hopefully they will be able to apply with technology when they have access to that. And finally, when we were discussing the concept of digital literacy with preschool teacher Katie, she touched on something that we'll be talking about in an upcoming episode. In early childhood, we have something called ECFE, it's Early Childhood Family Education. And so really talking with families about what digital literacy looks like in their home, because we all know kids are watching and listening what their families are modeling. So if families are on their phones all the time, they're not getting that connection that they need. And so really talking with families how they can be models in their home for digital literacy, as in how we intentionally use technology, not just for passive engagement, but for really active engagement and for learning. Modeling is something that we'll dig into further in our upcoming episode exploring the term digital natives. I lead a debate with some brilliant guests discussing whether we should ditch that term and how best to prepare students for their lives as digital citizens. Before that one though, next week's episode discusses the current state of girls' engagement in computing in a brilliant conversation between the Raspberry Pi Foundation's Chief Learning Officer Rachel Arthur, Dr Jessica Hamer from King's College London and Becky Patel from Tech She Can. They'll be discussing the current state of girls' engagement in computing and exploring how we can empower more girls in computing through school, university and into their careers. If you prefer to listen to these episodes rather than watch them here on YouTube, you can subscribe to the Hello World podcast wherever you get your podcasts. That's it for our Teacher Tips episode. Hope it's useful and we hope the Hello World magazine and podcast help you engage and educate young people in computing. Bye.